All right, so it's going to be a quick video on calibrating accelerometers. Um, so before I get into my method for calibrating accelerometers, I just want to talk a little bit about why what people often think is the way to calibrate an accelerometer is wrong. And that is because you have 1G of force uh, at all times coming down. And now if you look at my graph, that 1G is being translated onto all three axes at random values. And now if one of these axes is off, it doesn't stop you from moving it to zero. Like I can move red to zero, I can move blue to zero, I can move green to zero, right? So we don't really know. The fact that an axis is at zero or not zero is not really helpful. In fact, any position of all three axes is essentially useless. Uh, the only way you can have a meaningful kind of read on three axes at once is if you have like a perfectly calibrated surface that you know is perfectly calibrated and then you know your IMU is perfectly flat on that. Now if your IMU is already in a vehicle that's going to be really hard to do. Um, and so I've come up with a simple method that we can use to make sure that we're calibrating it properly and that is to go one axis at a time. Now. This is a great example IMU because if I just put it down on the table and you look at our green axis, uh, annoyingly I spiked it so it's hard to see, but you might notice that the green is over one. Now, if you think about that, that has to be wrong. And that's kind of our clue for what we're gonna be doing to calibrate. So essentially you wanna freely rotate your IMU in space or your whole vehicle once it's mounted and look at just one axis at a time and find the highest value that it'll go to. And right now, this green, I'm gonna wiggle it a little bit. You can see me wiggling it there and try to find its highest point. And once I have its highest point, I can then offset that to bring that to one. And in this case, it's too high, so it's really obvious. Sometimes it'll be too low. So let's take a look at this red axis now. I'm not actually gonna input the numbers. Uh, you guys know how to input the numbers. You don't need to see me do that. And you can see I'm playing with it, trying to get it to one, and it's not quite going. Oh, there we go, almost there. Uh, and so basically anytime you move it, you'll see if you move it too much in a direction, it starts going back the other way. So bring it back and then try moving it the other axis, rotating it. But as you can see, this red just does not want to go to one. So this red is too low. This would need to be bumped up. And then we finally do separately, we bring up the blue axis. And then I think blue on this one actually goes to one if I get it right. Yeah, there we go. Now that's at one. And I don't know if it'll go over one or if it just goes to one, but you can play with it. Take your time. It seems like that's about as high as it's gonna go. So it looks like my blue is accurate, my red is too low, and my green is too high. But if I were to just like flip this in some weird way and be like, oh look, green and red are both at zero. So this means blue is wrong, right? No. Look right now actually green and red are zero and blue is one how is that even possible that looks like it's accurate but it is not accurate so the way to know is to do it one axis at a time now if you knew that you had a perfectly level surface that you put your thing on you might be able to just offset everything so that it's zero zero one and you're convinced that that's accurate um but i find this method is a little bit better um and this will also work if your IMU is mounted in some random orientation. Um, a weird thing to note is that if you do this calibration detection, uh, it's going to do that with an uncalibrated accelerometer. And so it'll pick a level space for you. And then once you do that, when you apply the accelerometer offsets, it's actually going to rotate your vehicle slightly. Um, and that's kind of a, just a limit in the way this system is currently rigged up. You can't quite get it perfect unless you were to calibrate your accelerometer and gyro first and then manually do your roll pitch yaw rotation which is really hard because as soon as you do that you have to apply those mathematically to your offsets and unless you got a pen and paper and you're really smart 
uh, that's not going to work out well. Um, so what I do is I just detect calibration. I then manually do my accelerometer one axis at a time and I take the slight hit that maybe my level is not 100% perfectly level and I'm okay with that. Uh, hopefully in the future I will build a better accelerometer, a better detection system where it'll kind of walk you through all the steps of doing this. Um, but I'm kind of lazy. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, so that's basically it for on how to calibrate accelerometers. I've got some other ones here. Let me hook up this one. Uh, so this one here. And just take a look at another one. You know what, if you're staying around, let's just call this the bonus content section. And I will try to actually calibrate this next accelerometer so you can follow along. Uh, and for this one I need external MPU 6050. Um, and yeah. So on this one, I know all of the axes are too low, but let's actually even do this a little bit weird. Let's just like hold it at this random orientation. Put this down here so it's kind of firm. Run this detection. Give it a second. Okay, we're gonna apply that. And then write the app config, now it's level. I can assure you I'm holding it at some completely random <coughs> orientation. Uh, and now this accelerometer, like I'm holding it flat right now and the, these axes are crazy. Which is why you'd never be able to figure this out unless you take it one axis at a time. So let's bring up blue, rotating it along one axis. This is the highest it'll go and then rotate it the other way. See how high it'll go. This one is terrible. Oh my gosh. Okay, so we want to offset this by point. 05 and I mean these numbers seem small in terms of like a value but it makes a big difference so X we're gonna go 0.05 that's crazy high honestly even 0.01 can be a pretty big difference in terms of the performance of your vehicle so that was backwards make that negative boom okay that is looking better Yep. Okay, I'm gonna call that good. And now let's go with the let's go for red. It's just trippy holding this at the most random angle. I don't have my camera on so you guys can't see, but it's pretty confusing. Okay, this one is also low. Oh okay. I think this is the highest we're gonna get it. Uh, we want to go like 0.04 maybe. Let's go 0.03. See how that looks. Boom. Okay, that's that's better. I'd say that's okay. Maybe you'd want 0.03, 3 or 5 or something. And now we'll try to get our green axis up there uh, and see where this goes. Green axis is doing pretty good. This is the best of the axes so far. Okay, so this one, I would say we probably want to do minus 0 0.025 maybe. Let's try that. Boom, okay, and now. No, that's not perfect. But anyway, you get the point. Now we're calibrated. And yeah, you don't want to pay attention to those spikes. Those are not, not real values. You want it to be settled in at a maximum value. And now, none of all of our axes can go to 1, and they can't go over 1. Now, if you want to be completely crazy OCD, um, you can try measuring the minimum and max values, because sometimes the range on a single axis is not a full one and maybe centering it would work better but I'm not actually convinced that that's better I think you might be better off because you're never riding upside down so I think you might be better off having it in the top half maybe more accurate I don't know you can try centering it but for me I find it's good enough to just measure it one axis at a time 
get the maximum value offset based off of that and now you know like when your maximum value is not one you know that's wrong for sure versus trying to like look at what zero is like zero is just meaningless because any axis can be rotated to zero so that's it for this one yeah and if i think i said it like three times already but if you have a perfect surface and everything's calibrated uh you can like just try to go for zero zero one um also i think the proper method that they recommend for calibrating is to like get a calibrated surface measure like all six sides and all the axes on all six sides and then average them out uh, but that's a lot of work so this is kind of the poor man's method of doing it anyway hope that's helpful and not too rambly oh my god 11 minutes <laughs> cool uh enjoy